So I see a lot of people get confused when they're trying to decide how to do state management in React when they're also using GraphQL. So in this video, I'm going to go through how I actually like to do it and approach it and split things up. And I'm going to also go through some techniques which I don't think are very good that I see some people do and that make things more complex. Now in this video, I'm going to be specifically showing examples using Apollo, but I think this really applies to whatever GraphQL client you happen to be using, like Urkel or Relay. So we're going to start with what I would not recommend doing, and that is fetching some data with Apollo, then taking that data and sticking it in a different store or different state management library. So here's an example of that. Here I'm using the use query hook from Apollo, and I'm fetching some to-dos. And then I'm taking this data, and in a use effect hook, I'm calling set to do's. So I'm taking the data that I fetched from Apollo, and I'm sticking it in this state right here, in this use state hook. And so I have now access to the to do's here, but I could also access the to do's from the data. And so now I have basically duplicate data. And the way I did this here is I was just doing it with a use state hook. But again, it doesn't really matter that I chose that. We could have also dispatched this as an action if we were using Redux and stored our data in Redux. The point is we now have two places where we have duplicate data, and we're now having to keep them in sync as we either fetch more data from Apollo or we update Apollo. We then have to make sure our other store has the same data or we have a problem. Now, I usually see people do this for one of two reasons. The first is their entire application is already using some state management library like Redux and they want to keep all the data in Redux and have that as the single source of truth. So they're fetching with Apollo, but they're really ignoring the cache that Apollo has and just storing everything in Redux. And if that's your case, I would recommend just avoiding Apollo altogether, right? You're going to have a larger bundle size because React Apollo is pretty large. And Apollo has its own cache, so you're storing duplicate data whether you want to or not. You could just go through and turn off the cache for Apollo if you wanted to. But in my opinion, if all you're doing is making a GraphQL request and then sticking it in Redux, you may want to use something like GraphQL request. Um, because all this is is it's a lightweight wrapper over fetch. So it takes a query, right? You can write your GraphQL queries, and then you can make a fetch request to the GraphQL API with your query. And then after that is finished, you can just, you know, dispatch that data to Redux or whatever state management library you want to store it in. The second reason I see people putting data they get from Apollo in another store is they want to add some extra fields to it. So for example, here I'm fetching from to do's and then I'm taking that to do data here. And in the use effect, I am mapping over it before I call set to do's. And you can notice here, I am adding an extra field here, complete. I'm saying it to false. So the, this might be a field that's only needed on the client, for example. And uh, then I just take the to-dos that are in my state, and then I am rendering the to-dos here. And, right, and I might make some decision based on whether the to-do is complete, and I might strike a line through it. And then every, whenever I want to update this, I'm just calling set to-dos, and I'm passing in the new to-dos. Right After I click on an item, I want to flip whether it's complete or not. The problem is this gets really messy again. If the data ever changes from the to-dos query here, I'm having to sync it with the local state here and making sure that what is complete should stay complete or whatever. I'm gonna have to have, write some logic to handle that. So the way I like to solve this is by just directly accessing the data from Apollo. So here I have my data that I'm fetching the to-dos and this use query, and then I'm just using that data to map over the to-dos here. And then the extra state that I want to store, for example, whether a to-do is complete or not, that's the only thing that I'll store in the state. So you notice here I now have a map. And basically what this map does is I'm just mapping to-do ID to whether it's complete or not. So like true or false, for example. And so when I map over the to-dos now, I just look up in my to-do map whether it's complete or not, looking up by the to-do ID. And if it is complete, then I show a line through it. And then when I click on a to-do, I just update that state, right? I set that the to-do ID is the opposite of complete. And so now I have basically separated my state. The data that I am fetching from Apollo, I keep that in Apollo here. And then any of the extra fields or data that I need to add just on the client side, I keep that isolated in the use state here. Now, sometimes you don't need to store anything in state. You just need to transform the data in some way, right? So if I want to transform the data 
I can just actually add that directly in the render method right here. So I could say new to do's is equal to data dot to do's and then I can map over them here. For example, if I want to just add some random field, I could. So length of name or something, I could say x dot name dot length. I don't know, some random field you want to add here, right? I can map over it and I can filter if I want to based on some value, make sure the names aren't blank. So here I'm just removing any blank names, for example. And you could do all kinds of stuff here. Now, if this becomes computationally heavy, which most of the time it doesn't, um, but if it does, you can just stick like a use memo in there and memoize this so you're not doing it on every single render. So in a project, I'll probably use a mix of Apollo, use state, context, or some other state management library like Redux or MobX, but I won't stick data from Apollo and other places like Redux or use state. Instead, I'll keep the data isolated. So for example, I'll use the data that I fetch from APIs and keep that in Apollo and the Apollo cache. And then any local state data that I have, I will stick that in either use state or use reducer. And then if I need to share data either between components or maybe it is global state, then I will stick that in context or a state management library. So for example here, you can see I'm mixing all three of those things in a single component. Here I have a use query. So this is the data I get from Apollo. Here's some local state. And then here's I'm also grabbing like, for example, whether a sidebar is open. And this is just some global state that I'm storing in context and I wanna be able to access it here. And one last thing that I'll mention is we can store absolutely everything in the Apollo cache if you want to. There is Apollo link state. So we could kind of replace these things and store local state stuff in Apollo. But personally, I'm not a big fan of that technique. I think the GraphQL abstraction doesn't work quite that well with state management. I don't think there's really anything wrong with the technique or doing it in that way. I just personally have found splitting it up and using use state and Redux or context to be a lot easier and a lot simpler than trying to store everything in the Apollo cache and sticking local state uh, in Apollo and trying to use Apollo link state.